AKP um, government manipulate people not to resist or pacify them actually. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned these very interesting facts of you know, people being angry in the streets without any reason, etc. But could I suggest, and I wonder what you think about this, that it is a question of uh, still Turkey struggling in defining its national identity. Uh, the Turkish people are still having enormous health problems, especially because the ultra-nationalists try to convince them that they are a pure Turkish race, whatever that means, which is a complete nonsense, because there are no pure races in the world. Historically speaking, one of the greatest frauds of history is to uh, present, I mean, there are serious historians who think that there are pure races, and uh, you know that's what the Germans were thinking about, and so on. It seems that people still have difficulty in understanding that this is a fraudulent view of history that all races, and especially all the races, are all multi-ethnic and mixed. Sure. Even now, the British are just about coping with the idea that the British are a mixture of Anglo-Saxons, of uh, Vikings, of, of the question. Normans, but I have to lay the ground because what I'm saying is new. I have to define it to ask the question. My and the problem is, therefore, that one solution is if you understand, for example, that uh, Turkey, uh, Turkey as a Muslim state, Islamic religion has nothing to do with Turkish nationalism. Arabic Muslim culture is very different from Turkish culture. No wonder Ataturk himself was not a religious man. He was an atheist almost uh, because of uh, time problem. I'm trying to say that therefore that there are even in the claims of the nationalists, especially the ultra-nationalists, I mean, I'm not against can patriotism. We, can we really ask the question, please? This is the question. That okay. Do you think that the okay. solution one, is in it. understanding that if Turks would understand that they are multi-ethnic, the, the harems of the sultans were full of European women, then you can see that uh, the Turks need not struggle with this idea. The reason they have the difficulty is because of the forces of darkness, of ultra-nationalism. Can we please cut it short and finish? Okay. I'm, I'm stopping you, please. She got the question. As a journalist, I assume you have some private conversation government uh, journalists or journalists working for Zaman or Mustafa or for the, this horrible being an archit newspaper. And what, what, are, what, what are their reaction to the AK requires in this impact for journalists? <coughs> The question was uh, why there is no Tahrir in Turkey. Make it small. Well, there was Tahrir in, in Turkey. Uh, I've been to Tahrir. Uh, Tahrir, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember the number, but it takes uh, you know, a certain amount of, uh, certain number of people. And then I calculated the number, and I remember that Nebruz in Diyarbakir was five times more than Tahrir. You didn't see it. There was Tahrir, <laughs> and it was during the last summer. There were many Tahrirs in Istanbul, in you know other parts of the country, but they were you know, they were they weren't they they, they were invisible. Let's say uh, the silence of the media might be unimaginable for some people here, but it is so. And if one million people gather in some place without any political connotation, that is news. But if you don't see it, that's not news. If the government doesn't want you to see it, it's not news. Or if the government wants to see this whole thing as if, you know, those crazy terrorists coming together, you, and you don't, you're not ashamed of yourself uh, going on the screen and saying that, then, it, then it's not tahrir, it's some, you know, terrorist action. 
So there was suffering. People resisted. It's not like, you know, they don't resist. They resist, but they are brutally op oppressed. So, yeah, there are many Tahmiyus in Turkey, and at the, mo at the moment as well. Uh, and your question, anger, national identity, and... Uh, we were making this distinction between, uh, between the period, pro, uh, pre AKP period and AKP period. That also there was ultra nationalists and Kemalists ruling the country, and they were the hegemon. They, their hegemony was the you know, it was in power, and the AKP came, and that whole thing went away. They removed a, a strong hand of the military from the Turkish politics. Well, it's not the case, and we saw that it's not the case in Umar basically, because our prime minister and the other spokesmen of the spokesmen and skin doctors of the government went up to say, uh, you know, use the same discourse that we are <coughs> used to listen from the international scammers, uh, governments or uh, like politicians. So there is no distinction anymore. In my, in my point of view, uh, there is no distinction anymore. There is no difference anymore. At least with a massacre uh, proves that. And this Islam, ident Turkish identity and Islam thing was always there. Even the ultra-nationalist Kemalist and in your words, atheist understanding of that identity uh, was you know, in power. The Islam, Islam, especially officially Islam, which it's, you know, the boundaries was uh, drawn by the government, by the political authority, of course, but Islam was there. It was never out of the you know, context. And for that, uh, you know, conservative government supporting media, there's a very recent uh, development. Yesterday, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, colleagues, wrote about the message <coughs> and it, it was a very strong article. It was a very heavy criticism uh, to Prime Minister, personally, even. Uh, since Prime Minister was defending the massacre, he wasn't stepping back. He said, please don't talk anymore. The, that was the title of his article. And he was, by the way, fired. And another friend, Hakan Albayra, who, who happened to be the, the columnist in the same newspaper, said that he's resigning as in protest. So, yeah, and unfortunately, it was obvious that the oppression would come to that point that they're going to, you know, uh, be victims of this uh, freedom of speech situation at some point. And now we're at that stage where they're not even, the power is not even satisfied with its own sons, let's say. So, inshallah, they will bring us some. <laughs> this is my new English, I'm sorry, I'm making an article. Some question from this one. Um, to what extent do you think America has influence over Turkey and specifically on the question of Syrian intervention? Uh, commented on the, um, <coughs> the, the rhetoric used by AKP and confusion <coughs> created on the um, opponents, but if we talk about specifically about the political opponents in terms of political parties, don't you think that the confusion also created a dilemma for them as well um, as how to react to the actions taken by AKP? Because, um, and don't you think that they've also contributed to the numbness and the invisibility of certain actions by not focusing, um, by maybe sometimes um, getting confused as to what to focus on? To take the example of the uh, reaction they've given to 19, the removal of the 19th of May um, marches. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's clear. One more question. Um, I just want to know um, how much power the NGOs and human rights organizations have in place under the NPC. Is that the NPC? Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, I'm we have a saying in Turkish from Edirne to Ardahan that conveys the whole map of Turkey. So it's like if, if USA attack is like from 
and then I told Adam, like, it's like it is effect, effective on the whole Turkey, of course, like it is very much indeed. And well, it's not, I don't want to get you know this into this conspiracy uh, tone, but uh, as we all know, the uh, United States has a project for Middle East. And the project is uh, not to do it like they did in Iraq, but to form a new uh, political status for the whole Middle East. And it's moderate Islamic, and it's uh, in good terms with liberal values, and it's represented by Qatar Saudi collaboration. And Turkey is very much in, you know, in this you know business. Uh, and Turkey happened to be the only. Uh, successful example of this perfect marriage of neoliberalism and Islamic conservatism. So uh, this example has to stand. This window dressing should be shiny at all times. So I think USA is supporting that in, in every way. And not only in Turkey, by the way. I, I'm, t I'm totally based in Tunisia. And I see that Hillary Clinton now and then pops up in, in Tunisia, where there is no, you know, petrol, or no, you know, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, so they need another uh, example which is succeeding. I think Tunisia will be supported, and, and NAFTA, which is the equivalent of APP in, uh, in Tunisia, will be supported as well. Uh, yeah, that's why the United States is uh, pretty much involved in this procedure. And I think you know, all those uh, political analysts, and I, I, yesterday I was in Oxford and I was giving a talk and there was this academician, well, was a very much respected academician, who was, uh, you know, defending the Turkish model and how brilliant it is and how successful it is, blah, blah, blah. And I said, like, you should be talking about out of political engagement, otherwise you couldn't have done that because the facts and figures piled up to prove the otherwise and you are already doing, you know, pr uh, you're you know, holding on to your argument that proves that this uh, proves only that you're politically engaged with something. And I still think so. Only those people who are politically engaged in this project can uh, defend this because those are the only ones who think that you know, hundred journalists, seven hundred students, and thousands of political activists in prison can be a little prize for a greater good in Middle East. But I think it looks a little bit bad from outside, especially for Turkey, uh, even for the United States. So Hillary Clinton came to Turkey and mentioned Ahmed Sheikh and Nedim Şener by name, and that was when they were released. And so that was, you know, say, uh, opposition's uh, contribution to numbness, yeah, that is uh, quite significant because uh, they have their own boundaries and their grassroots movements. Uh, don't let them do things, don't let them talk about things, especially about Kurdish issue, Armenian issue as well. Uh, I'm talking about social democrats especially and their uh, grassroots uh, is at some point races and sometimes too close to the discussion of you know Kurdish issue or any issue whatsoever. Uh, so yeah they're creating they're contributing to the numbness as well. They're paralyzed. They're paralyzed with their uh, constraints of restraints restraints of uh, restraints coming from the history. Uh, yeah, they're contributing. Human rights associations, well, uh, since they are uh, <laughs> labeled <laughs> as um, terrorist organizations, uh, their illegitimacy uh, is pretty much in question uh, according to the ordinary man. It was al already so in Turkey. Uh, they were either uh, considered to be Kurdish terrorists or Turkish terrorists. Uh, but now, after being labeled officially by the government that they are terrorists, or, you know, uh, they are uh, collaborating with terrorists, and some of them are in prison as well uh, as being terrorists, uh, so the uh, illegitimacy um, is quite shaken.
uh, in the eyes of the APT supporters, especially. Actually, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, what do you think about the relationship between Israel and Turkey on uh, Syria? And the second one is, uh, what do you think about uh, Somali uh, company? Do we have any benefits? <laughs> Uh, would you kindly tell us how different parties and sections of society in Turkey understand from democracy and how do you define democracy? No, no, I will continue. One more question. Uh, this question I always uh, wonder if this can be done in Turkish law. As far as I'm concerned, as a Turkish prime minister, he clearly said it before the election. Uh, you have to be built up for that. As a prime minister, I think this should be illegal. So this should be this, this sentence definitely divide the nation. You have to be from me or opposite me. It means I will kill you. It's just the way he did it with the I the plan, the way he did it with the uh, Jenner and uh, recently I, I watch uh, uh, party outside which is also is converting because it's the pressure the income and the uh, uh, mine business and all that, I can see all that. And when I look at all this uh, Tayyip Erdogan 